What's going on everybody out there? Your Dark Avenger Chris here and this is a super special video. It's not something I haven't done before but today is a special day for multiple reasons. Today's Wednesday. It's comic book day which makes it special in and of itself but today is also the day Action Comics 1000 was released. It was actually a midnight release in stores worldwide. I'm not saying every store but there were midnight releases so people have gotten their hands on this book at midnight tonight or today this morning <clears throat> don't quote me anyway the book's out and this is huge this is a big time for superman and this is a big time for superman fans we are all celebrating this is the first ever comic i believe to hit its 1000th issue with detective right behind it amazing spider-man if if marvel stops renumbering there are a lot of comics that are right behind action, but action hit the 1,000th spot first. And it's ironically during Superman's 80th anniversary. That's right. This book came out a week ahead of time. It is 80 years of action comics. So Superman's actually upside down. Superman's actually 80 years old as well. And I, I actually have this book for a specific reason. I'll get into that when we um, get to the part of the video where I'll talk. Anyway, in this video, we're going to talk about Action 1000. Now, making sure this video goes up at 3 p.m. on Wednesday. So it gives everybody ample time to get the book and check it out. Also, I will put the word spoiler in the title. But I'm making sure this book goes out late. The book was released on midnight. Now, I know a lot of people aren't going to be crazy enough. I say that, but I know a lot of people that would. So anyway, I know a few people will not go to the midnight release and will get it during the day on Wednesday. So I'm making sure to put this video up late. This There's no preview. Se uh, unfortunately, I can't give you guys any preview art because there's a lot of stories in here by a lot of different artists, a lot of different writers. But I'm also not going to give a non-spoiler overview because, again, this is a celebration book, a celebration of Superman, a celebration of a thousand action comics. So really there's nothing in this book that connects to any story except the last story in the book, which is leading into Brian Michael Bendis's Man of Steel weekly run, which will then go into action and Superman. Other than that, these are all stories just celebrating Superman and celebrating action comics. So there's really no spoilers here. There's no major story breakthrough here. There's a teaser for a major story coming up, which is Man of Steel, but nothing other than that. And that's what I want to start this off with. This is an 80-page giant. There are 11 stories in this book. And all of it is celebrating Superman. And it honestly, reading this book, as a Superman fan, I got enjoyment from every single one of the stories in here. But again, if you are a casual reader of Superman, if you are uh, not a humongous fan of Superman, this might... I mean, obviously you're going to want to pick it up, but this might not be a book you want to read in one sitting or in maybe even two sittings because there are a lot of stories here and a lot of it is just <clears throat> stories. Like I said, it's celebrating the Man of Steel. It's celebrating Superman who he is, Action Comics. There were a lot of nice throw-ins in this book as well that I liked. And there was a, a callback to Action uh, Comics number one, what happened like afterwards. We had Superman through time. We had tons and tons of really great Superman v. Lex moments. There were a couple of stories in the book that I could have lived without, but at the same time, they were fun to read still anyway. So again, this is a 80-page giant celebrating Action 1000 and Superman. So going into this book, just know that when it comes to going into the book. So I'm going to go through the <clears throat> stories that are in the book and um, just share my thoughts on it. Kind of give my my favorite, my least favorite, etc., etc. thoughts. So it opens up with a celebration. You know, it's a celebration day in Metropolis celebrating Superman. And Clark doesn't want to go to it because he's not Superman to be celebrated. He's Superman because he does the right thing. I loved it. Dan Jurgens art, Dan Jurgens writing. It was a great opening story. The second story, actually, I felt <clears throat> kind of reverberated a lot of what Action 1000 was. And Superman got caught by Vandal Savage, who shot him back through time. So basically, he was living in the 1930s, 40s, 50s, 60s. He was trapped in the past so that Vandal Savage could destroy the present. 
and he had to fight his way back. And ironically, as readers, we know that Superman started in the 1930s. So Superman literally was going through all the eras of his life while they weren't really his eras of his life anymore, but for readers it was, he literally built, uh, fought his way back from the 1930s all the way to present day to be there, you know, in the present, to stop Vendel Savage, to be with his family, and ironically it was his birthday as well. Go figure. Um, the third story is one I could have done without. Because again, it really didn't, it celebrate. It, it, it had a great message in it, but this was definitely my least favorite out of all of the books. So Superman is fighting Brainiac apparently in Tokyo, but the story doesn't follow Superman. The story is about this one guy who's being brain controlled by Brainiac, but he's fighting back against it. And Maggie Sawyer, who's leading the Metropolis PD, <clears throat> instead of killing him, uses rubber bullets. So Superman's like, oh, you know, at least there's hope and, you know, they didn't kill him. And it really just, it had nothing to do with nothing. The last page had a beautiful Kurt Swan, <clears throat> full page Superman. But again, that wasn't really a Superman story. That was Superman kind of uh, being in awe of people when he's not around, which I still liked. I still thought it was a cool story, but it was one of my least favorite. The next one is something I want to talk about that was seen here. Now, this is a retrospective 80 years of Superman in action comics. Now, there was a preview story at the very end of this book by um, Neil Adams, and it was Superman, uh, it's called Superman the Game. And it's basically Superman versus Lex Luthor in chess, and of course Lex, Lex doesn't like losing to Superman, so he has like these kryptonite chains pop out, and Superman breaks free of them. I liked it, it was a great story, I liked the Neil Adams story, but again, you got the preview right here, if you got this book last week, Last Wednesday, you already saw the story and read the story in the 80-page giant. But again, this book is celebrating Superman in action. And this book obviously would only be bought by Superman fans or maybe people who are interested in going back in time and, and going through the timeline of Superman. So not too many uh, casual readers are going to pick up this book and read it unless you're a fan of Superman. So you got that story a week early. <clears throat> the next story was by far one of my favorites. It went all the way back to Action Comics number one, and it takes place, as you all know, there's that car that Superman smashes into a rock at the very beginning of, at, on the cover of Action One, Action number one, and it's also in the story. But anyway, this takes place the day after, and the guy whose car was destroyed brings it to the shop, Butch. And he, the, the mechanic says you could fix it, but it's going to cost a lot of money. Or you could just junk it and get a new one. And Superman shows up, of all things. He's like, you know, I looked for you on that lamp pole, and I saw you climb down. And the car is symbolic to Butch, because he's like, you know, I did my research on you. I see that, you know, you had a hard life, you know, and now you're kind of fighting back against, you know, against the world here by doing what you're doing. But you have a second chance here, because obviously Superman didn't bring him into the law. He's like, you can either fix your life and be a better person and be what you didn't have, or you could junk your life and continue doing what you're doing. And the last page was my favorite. He fixed the car, which is symbolic to he basically fixed his life. So even people who argue that the Superman back in the day was just, you know, very hard, you know, uh, what do you call it? kind of strong-willed, you know, brash, whatever, proof that that Superman, too, had what we have today in Superman. And I like that story. That was This was one of my favorites in the book. One of my favorites. I had a lot of favorites in here. Uh, the next story was another one that was... No, I'm sorry, wrong one. Uh, Superman and Lex at a planetarium. It kind of harkened back to Lex and, and Clark when they were in um, their younger days in Smallville. Because we all know Lex, apparently, they moved him to Smallville at some point throughout all the retellings. And Lex was at the planetarium to send out an SOS to find out if there was extraterrestrial life out in space. Clark was there looking for answers. And ironically, there was a part where Lex was doing an experiment and he almost got himself killed and ironically Clark was there in the background hiding in the shadows and he's the reason why Lex was saved. Clark saved Lex a lot throughout their childhood which I kind of find ironic that they became their greatest nemesis. Anyway, I don't know. It's Smallville. Watch Smallville and you'll understand what I'm saying. The next story was the end of the world. Apparently in this timeline or in this story arc the world is dying, the earth is dying, human race has moved on, they've gone to another planet <clears throat> They're living out in space, but Earth has been completely abandoned for billions of years. But Clark keeps coming back, you know, because his parents were buried on Earth. And Earth is about to be destroyed. So he comes back one last time, and 
it was an interesting conversation, to say the least. It was a little... There were certain lines that felt out of character with Superman, but it was still okay. <clears throat> I enjoyed it, but it was one of the lower ones for me as well. Uh, five Minutes was another one of my favorites. Clark's writing an article, and he has five minutes until it goes to press, but then all hell breaks loose all around Metropolis. He has to save a trade. He has to stop robbers. He has to stop a satellite from crashing into the Earth. And then he runs back with 90 seconds to spare, and he sends it. He ends up sending it, but Perry's like, ah, forget that, that's old news. Superman just saved the train, get over there and get some witnesses, get some talk, get some, I'm going to hold the presses for this. It was hilarious, and that is, if we get that with Brian Michael Bendis, because he mentioned wanting to focus on the Daily Planet, if we get stories, obviously this is a short, but if he can write stories like that, where, yeah, we're in the Daily Planet, yeah, we're getting Clark, but we also have that little sprinkle of Superman, like those couple of pages, you know, an issue of him being Superman, Bendis can make that work for action. So if that's kind of a teaser of what Bendis is thinking about doing, it wasn't written by Bendis, I'm interested. I hope that I hope that that's something we get with action comics moving forward with 1001 in two months. Uh, this is definitely something that I can get behind as far as what Bendis... If this is what Bendis is planning, I can get behind that. I really, truly can. And I'm going to enjoy it. Um, the next one was another one that was really low. I'm talking, this one goes right above the Brainiac story. It's Missile Flick. It's spotlighting Missile Flick. And he's, it's the fifth dimension. This woman's giving a tour of Superman. And, and at first you think, oh, it's like, you know, Legion of Superheroes time where it's going through his rogues, the Fortress of Solitude, where he was raised. And then we get to where she says, and then the end to a specific, um, villain from his rogue gallery. And it's Nitz Missile Flick. And that's where the tour freezes, because it's like, Missile Flick doesn't have that yet, so it's like, that's where this, that's where I always freeze up. There's no end yet. And I like how the girlfriend's like, yeah, but you don't want to kill him. You know you could him out of existence in one second, but you don't want to do it, because you love the chase. You don't want him to go, because he brings out the best worst in you. And it was a fun Missile Flick story, I will say that. Um, the next story was Superman being faster than a speeding bullet. This guy who's on the edge, basically, ready to shoot this woman. Superman's miles away. He's like, I'm not going to make it. I'm too far away. And he's jumping into hyperspeed and everything. And he ends up making it. But because the woman actually was brave and pushed herself... It, it, you'd have to read the story to be to fully understand it. But she puts herself closer to danger, which gives her an extra millisecond to spare. And Superman jumps in to save the day. And he's kind of inspired by that person. And I like how in the end it's him and Lois talking. And she's like... You met somebody today that inspired you, didn't you? And he's like, yeah. I, it's funny how that story kind of shows Superman inspires millions, but he's still inspired by others as well. And then the last story that we get is obviously the Bendis story. Sorry about that. Had a minor interruption. But anyway, we're in the last story, the Bendis story. This is what's leading into the Man of Steel Weekly. And we get introduced to a new villain. We get introduced to him... Fighting Superman, apparently, and beating up on Superman really, really badly. There was a little uh, pun in there about the trunks being back. These two girls that are helping Superman. One girl is like, the trunks are back. And she's like, yeah, it's a symbol of something, I think. And the other one's like, but he got rid of them. It was, it was funny because it's kind of like that age-old fan debate of liking the trunks and not liking the trunks. But anyway, this new villain apparently wants to cleanse the universe's of Kryptonians, and the last couple of panels, we find out that A, this villain was on Krypton, and B, he might be the reason Krypton was destroyed, and C, he knows Jor-El. This is going to be very interesting leading into the Man of Steel. Again, I am very, very nervous having one writer doing all of Superman. Um, you know, before... Action 1000, we had Tomasi on Superman and Dan Jurgens on Action. Dan Jurgens is moving over to Green Lanterns, a book I don't read. And again, Dan Jurgens does great work with Batman Beyond. I think Green Lanterns might be Beyond Saving, but if anybody's going to save it, he is one of the few people on a list of people I think that could do it. Uh, but again, Bendis now has full reigns over all things Superman in the universe in the in the main dc universe and i'm nervous i'm not gonna lie everybody knows that i'm a little bit worried about where things will go but i'm hopeful 
That's what Superman's all about. And I'm hopeful that he will do a great job with Superman. I'm hopeful he'll do a great job with action. But again, Bendis already has a lot on his plate. And we know that when Bendis has a lot on his plate, that's where his attention is divided into multiple different places. And it's harder. Superman already now is going to be one of the first titles going to a once a month for each title um, schedule again. Obviously, the price will buff up, and the amount of pages will also buff up. But at the same time, out of all the comic books that you guys want to go back to once a month, did Superman, Batman, still twice a month, everything? I'm just kidding. So I'm, I'm excited to see where Bendis is going to go with Superman. And I'm sure DC is going to be keeping a close eye on the sales and the fan base as we move forward. As far as Action Comics 1000 goes, though, this was an awesome, amazing celebration issue of Superman in action. And again, this was a celebration issue, nothing real of, of Superman in action. So there's nothing super importantly amazing here, unless you're a Superman fan. If you're a Superman fan, this is a huge issue for you. If you're a casual reader of Superman, you'll probably be like, there's a lot of stories here. It's going to take me a while to read it. And it's going to take you a while to read it. Uh, if you're not a, a fan of Superman and you're reading it because it's Action 1000, it could be a chore. Or, I don't know. It's up to you. Again, there are a lot of stories here that really are just celebrating the character and the book and making it to 1000. That's what this is all about. And I think the people who will enjoy this book most are those that are fans of Superman and Action. and Or, well, you'd be a fan of both. But, um... Uh, this book, you can't rate this book. I feel like this book truly can't be rated because it's a celebration issue. Some people will give it two stars because it's too much to read, too many stories. Some people will give it three stars saying it's a great book, but again, the stories, or maybe they won't like certain things. And then there will be people like me that give it five stars just because we're Superman fans. I mean, there's no way to look at this book without having a bit of bias to it. Because I know Superman fans will be like, this is a five out of five book. Nobody should think it's a chore to read. Nobody should think it's it's boring or too much. And then there are the people that aren't Superman fans that are going to be like, this was a lot. This was a lot to digest, and there were a lot of stories in here that really didn't have to be put in. So I understand both sides of the playing field. And because of that, I'm not going to rate the book. Because, again, as a fan of Superman, I'd give it five stars. But I know a lot of people out there that are casual Superman fans, not really Superman fans, who won't see it that way. And as whoever's watching this video, it depends what your hierarchy of fandom towards Superman is. If you're a huge fan, you're going to love it. If you're a moderate fan, you're going to like it. If you're not a fan at all, you might like it, you might not like it. That's how it goes with this book. But this was an amazing 1,000 issue. Awesome artwork all around. Awesome writing all around. I enjoyed this book thoroughly. Even though there were two stories that were lower on the list, I still enjoyed them. I enjoyed it. Happy 1000 Superman, happy 1000 Action, congratulations DC Comics and Superman in Action for making it to 1000 issues. Can't wait for the future of Superman. I am eagerly, nervously awaiting what comes next for Superman. And um, yeah, so that is my overview, discussion, review, thoughts on Action 1000. Would love to know what you guys think in the comments below. So feel free to let me know. Did you enjoy Action Comics 1000? Didn't you enjoy it? Did this bring you into Superman? Did this... Was this too much for you? Was it too little for you? I mean, there are some people that might actually say this was too little. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts. And if, you have, if you'd like to talk about the stories individually, feel free to. If you'd like to talk about the book in whole, it's your turn now. Feel free to comment below your thoughts about Action Comics 1000. Thank you all so much for being here. As always, take care, keep reading, keep collecting, and I will see you guys really soon in the next one. Later, everybody.